Um, and as I said, um, if your triglycerides are over 1.5, you can spend $120 on that test, but I'm telling you, there's going to be small dense LDL. And, and you, the only way to be really confident that you haven't got small dense L is, is a triglyceride below one, which is what most people on a true low carb diet, less than 50 grams, achieve triglycerides less than one. That is, that's sort of the healthy or the therapeutic uh, level. Now, what is it, rather than paying $120, I'm sort of saying, well, triglycerides predict it. Is triglycerides the best predictor of small dense LDL? Um, I looked at this, and triglycerides were, had, an, had a cor spearman correlation coefficient with the finding of small dense LDL of 0.45, which is pretty average. It's almost like tossing a coin. It's not that great. Um, LDL is worse. LDL, measuring LDL doesn't tell you whether there's small dense LDL. Measuring cholesterol certainly doesn't tell you whether there's small dense LDL. Measuring HDL doesn't tell you that. Interestingly, measuring HDL doesn't tell you that. Come back to that. Measuring non-HDL, which is total cholesterol minus HDL, is better than triglycerides at predicting small dense LDL. Measuring the LDL to HDL ratio is better. And for me, the best ratio at predicting the, total, the small dense LDL was total cholesterol HDL ratio. Now, I haven't got trig to HDL ratio there, and I might repeat this study with that, but it's similar to that uh, area. So to me, paradoxically, this funny ratio predicts the presence of small dense LDL better than triglycerides do, or HDL, which are correlated. The Australian cardiovascular risk uh, calculator, which, and, which is derived from the New Zealand cardiovascular risk factor, we just copied there, they did, just did a, such a good job, that uses the total cholesterol HDL ratio. So no matter what they try to do to get away from that ratio, that is the strongest predictor of cardiovascular disease. And guess what? It happens to be the most powerful predictor of small dense LDL. And this is from the 2022 review. They concluded that um, using ApoB and ApoA, using anything else, wasn't any better than total cholesterol HDL ratio. So they decided two years ago they're not moving from the total cholesterol HDL ratio, not because they understand anything about small dense LDL necessarily, but because it's just the most powerful predictor of cardiovascular outcomes. And now, you may not be able to read this, but this is, this is different measures being ranked in their ability to pre cardi predict cardiovascular disease. And um, the most powerful predictor is down the bottom, and the top predictor is total cholesterol HDL ratio. The next most pop is, is the ApoB A1 ratio. Triglycerides is towards the top. Um, yeah. So now I just wanted to mention something. Uh, this is the correlation between total cholesterol and LDL. So R squared of 0.87 means there's a high correlation. If you measure a total cholesterol, it's pretty much your LDL. There's no real difference between total cholesterol and LDL. Most of your total cholesterol is LDL. If you've got a high total cholesterol, what is it most likely to be due to? A high LDL. So those two things are largely equivalent. This is the relationship between um, HDL and triglycerides. And this is, to me, a law of nature. The higher your triglycerides are, now this is actually the reciprocal of HDL. Remember, in this ratio, total cholesterol HDL, we're not, we're not using HDL, we're using one divided by HDL, if you like, the reciprocal of HDL. And the reciprocal of HDL correlates logarithmically with triglyceride. It's a law of nature. It's R squared about 8.9 as well. And it's actually some, a way that I use to check our results. If a, if a doctor rings me up and says, oh, this triglyceride is wrong, it's too high, can't be right, I just look at the HDL. Well, the HDL's lower. What more proof do you need? So high triglyceride equals a low HDL or a high or a high in reciprocal of HDL. And it's a very reliable uh, parameter. And what I've said in my other talks is that 
triglycerides vary a lot. Now, pe people on low carb says, no, they don't. My low carb don't vary much, you know, it might be 0 0.6 or 0 0.9. That's a lot. That's a 50% difference. If your total cholesterol went from six to nine, you'd say that's a lot. Well, 0 0.6 to 0 0.9 is also a lot. So triglycerides are highly variable, whereas HDL is not. HDL varies by about five or 10% from day to day. And so my, my summary there is that HDL is a better measure of triglycerides than triglycerides. <laughs> That's why it works so well. That's why we can't escape it. And it's one of the reasons why I still prefer total cholesterol HDL ratio versus trigs over HDL, because the top line on trig HDL is so variable. <laughs>